Greetings everyone, Raif Durazi here, and this is your latest HIV news video. I haven't done one of these in months, and now we're back. Clearly I'm not in my home base. I'm abroad in Lisbon, Portugal for a global patient summit, so I'll be doing this from my hotel room today. Today I'll be covering 11 articles uh, covering topics ranging from the second Berlin patient's rare immune response that appears to have cured his HIV after a 2015 stem cell transplant, to a once-weekly HIV pill showing strong two-year results. We'll also touch on new COVID-19 booster guidance for people living with HIV, Yale's new Aging with HIV Research Initiative, Snoop Dogg's HIV awareness campaign, and dangerous drug trends like Bluetoothing. We'll explain what that means. Spreading infections, plus rising deaths in Europe, US aid cuts in Senegal, and more. Uh, for more immediately breaking headlines, be sure to follow, also follow me on Instagram and X, where I often will repost um, things as I see them in real time. Okay, number one, thread. U.S. aid cuts are undermining Senegal's fight against HIV. Senegal's hard-won progress against HIV is now in danger as U.S. aid cuts, particularly from U.S. AID, disrupt vital health programs. Once a West African success story, the country now faces shortages in antiretrovirals, PrEP, and contraceptives like the Jadel implant. NGOs such as Aboya, supporting nearly 500 women and children with HIV, have already halted 15% of their activities. According to El Pais, patients have faced difficulties in accessing their treatments consistently and discreetly with some fatal consequences. Midwife Amy Mbei told The Guardian, the women here are warriors, as she described the growing toll of unsafe abortions and shrinking care access. Experts warn that beyond the medical setbacks, these cuts risk eroding public trust in Senegal's fragile health system. Number two, AIDS map. More Europeans are dying from HIV now than 15 years ago. At the 20th European AIDS conference in Paris, experts warn that Europe is now seeing more HIV-related deaths than 15 years ago, making it the only region in the world where HIV deaths are rising instead of falling. According to the European Center for Disease Prevention and Control, or ECDC, HIV deaths in Europe increased by 37%, from 37,000 in 2010 to 51,000 in 2022, missing the UN AIDS 2025 target by more than fivefold. New infections also rose by 5% instead of falling by 75%. War in Ukraine and Russia, COVID-19 disruptions, and cuts to US and European HIV funding have all slowed progress. ECDC's Tamer Nori said that while 95% of people on treatment are virally suppressed, which is, side note, way higher than the U.S. suppression rate, and equity in the provision of prevention, testing, and treatment is rampant. PrEP coverage also lags behind goals, with 345,000 people having ever used it, mostly in just four countries, the U.K., France, Germany, and Spain. Despite some national successes, Europe as a whole is far off track from meeting UN AIDS' 2030 goal of ending the HIV epidemic. Number three, Health Day. Incidence of dermatologic disease persists in people with HIV. A new study in the Journal of the American Academy of Dermatology shows that while skin-related diseases among people with HIV have declined, they still remain common. Researchers from George Washington University analyzed data from 11,730 adults between 2011 and 2023 and found that nearly half, 49.4%, had at least one dermatologic condition. Me too. Infectious skin diseases were most frequent, affecting 41.4% of participants. Although infection rates dropped significantly from 463 to 41 cases per thousand, the study found that risks were higher among older adults, women, those with public insurance, and individuals with lower CD4 counts. Lead author Yagi's Matthew Akiska emphasized the need to include skin care and HIV treatment, noting, as the population of people living with HIV ages, chronic skin conditions are becoming more prominent and often persist despite effective HIV treatment. And I raised my hand because since my AIDS diagnosis, I've had dyshydrotic eczema that flares up from time to time, I think brought on by psychological or physical stress in general. That's the only factor I can think of that, that I've noticed that causes it to flare up. And so I can relate to this and it makes sense as you're getting older and um, you're constantly battling chronic inflammation, that you're gonna be more susceptible to this type of disease. Number four, the Jerusalem Post. Experts concerned as drug trend Bluetoothing causes surge in HIV cases. Health experts are raising alarms over a dangerous new drug trend called Bluetoothing, 
where users inject themselves with drug-laden blood from another person to save money. So to clarify that, someone injects themselves with drugs, they have these drugs in their blood, and then they extract some of their blood and give it to someone else so that they can inject that drug-filled blood into their own body, essentially sharing the drugs to get high. The practice reported in Fiji and South Africa is being linked to spikes in HIV infections. No wonder. With Fiji seeing cases increase tenfold between 2014 and 2024, according to UNAIDS, research led by Emory University's Brian Zanoni found that about 18% of South African drug injectors had tried Bluetoothing, describing it as a cheap method of getting high with a lot of consequences. Globally, injectable drug use causes about 10% of new HIV cases and up to 39% of new hepatitis B and C infections, the World Health Organization warns. Experts also note that Bluetoothing is not even very effective. There's much less of a buzz, I would imagine, because it's diluted in blood, said Iman Murphy of UNAIDS, but its risks for spreading blood-borne diseases remain alarmingly high. Number five, Medical Express. Missing nutrient in breast milk may explain health challenges in children of women with HIV. A new UCLA study published in Nature Communications has found that breast milk from women living with HIV contains about 50% less tryptophan, an essential amino acid crucial for babies' immune strength growth and brain development. Tryptophan often linked to turkeys, making people tired. That's how that's how that's the link that I always have in my brain when it comes to tryptophan. Um, researchers analyzed over 1,400 milk samples from women in Zambia in Haiti, revealing that this deficiency persists even in mothers receiving intra-retroviral therapy. The study helps explain why 1.3 million children born annually to women with HIV, though not infected themselves, still face 50% higher mortality rates and more frequent infections and developmental challenges. We've known for years that children born to mothers living with HIV face greater health challenges, but we didn't fully understand why said Dr. Grace Aldravandi of UCLA. Lead author Dr. Nicole Tobin added that the findings show this metabolic signature persists even when mothers are on effective treatment, suggesting a need for future studies on tryptophan supplementation to protect these vulnerable infants. Yeah, I'd be really interested to know the mechanism for why these women have lesser amounts of tryptophan. And also, is this also true in men, even though women are being studied? I'm curious to know if this is just across the board if we are deficient in tryptophan due to HIV, even though we may be undetectable and on effective antiretroviral treatment. And it's so interesting that this impact, in, like that it impacts children born from these mothers that are on effective treatment, even though they don't have HIV. I think there's always so, there's so many things that we don't understand about HIV and its impact on the body and our immune systems that is just fascinating to me. Number six, Black Enterprise Snoop Dogg partners with GLAAD to bring HIV awareness to HBCU campus. HBCU stands for Historically Black Colleges and Universities. Snoop Dogg has partnered with GLAAD and Gilead Sciences to launch Generation Z and HIV, Human Issue Southern Solution at Jackson State University, aiming to boost HIV awareness among Gen Z, the most openly LGBTQ plus generation, but least informed about HIV. According to GLAAD, only 37% of Gen Z feel knowledgeable about the virus. Students received free HIV testing and learned about PrEP, which reduces infection by 99% when taken as prescribed. A disease shows no prejudice, Snoop said. The best thing you can do is get protected. Find more information. The initiative also seeks to address high HIV rates in the U.S. South, where Black and Latino people make up 70%, 70% of new infections. GLAD plans to continue the HBCU tour with future stops at Alabama State University and the Atlanta University Center in 2026. Number seven, out. Why I created National Prep Day. October 10th marks the first ever National Prep Day, created by Tristan Shoecraft, CEO of Mister, to emphasize that prevention works when people can access it. The goal is to get 10,000 new people on PrEP, a medication that can prevent HIV when taken as prescribed. Despite having the tools to end new HIV transmissions, the U.S. still sees about 39,000 new infections each year, with only one in four eligible people using PrEP. Shookraft notes that the biggest barriers are access and equity, as Black and Latino communities and women remain underrepresented among PrEP users. 
Mister and its sister platform, Sister, now provide free PrEP, DoxyPEP, and STI testing to over 500,000 people nationwide, helping cut STI positivity rates by more than half. Shoecraft says National PrEP Day is about turning awareness into action. The tools exist, the infrastructure exists, what remains is commitment. Number eight, Yale Daily News, new medical school center set to investigate healthy aging with HIV. Yale School of Medicine has launched the AWARE Center, Aging Well with HIV Through Alcohol Research and Risk Reduction in Education. That's the acronym. Funded by a five-year grant from the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism to study how factors like alcohol use and socioeconomic stress affect aging in people with HIV. Led by Dr. Amy Justice, Dr. Julie Womack, and Dr. Vincent Loray, the center builds on the Veterans Aging Cohort Study, which includes data from over 13.5 million people. Justice explained that while both aging and HIV cause immune dysfunction, HIV brings it on with a vengeance, and chronic inflammation may accelerate premature aging. The team will also study biological markers of stress and how conditions like falls, dementia, and liver disease link to disadvantage and substance use. Beyond research, the center aims to mentor new scientists and share findings widely to help improve care and quality of life for the 1.2 million Americans living with HIV. Number nine, the body. What's the guidance on COVID vaccine boosters for people with HIV? Health experts are reminding people with HIV to get the updated COVID-19 booster this fall as new strains continue to emerge and immunity fades over time. According to the FDA and CDC, updated vaccines from Pfizer, BioNTech, Moderna, and Novavax are available with HIV listed among the health conditions that make individuals eligible. Dr. Bernard Kamins of Mount Sinai emphasized, anyone who is immunocompromised, including people with HIV, should get the booster, especially those with CD4 counts below 200, who face a much higher risk of severe illness. Studies show that vaccination reduces the risk of death and long COVID, which affects about 10% of people who've had COVID-19. However, vaccine access still varies across states due to shifting FDA and local policies. So experts advise checking with pharmacies or insurers beforehand to ensure availability and coverage. Number 10, pause. Weekly oral HIV treatment looks good at two years. At the European AIDS conference in Paris, researchers shared promising results from a phase two trial showing that a once weekly oral regimen of lenacapavir and islatravir maintain HIV viral suppression for 96 weeks or nearly two years. Out of 52 participants who switched from daily Victor V, 88.5% maintained an undetectable viral load after two years, with 100% of those who stayed in the study completing it successfully. The regimen was well tolerated, with only mild side effects like dry mouth and nausea, and adherence exceeded 99%. Dr. Amy Colson from Boston's Community Resource Initiative emphasized that participants reported greater satisfaction with the weekly treatment, saying it fit better into their lifestyle. If confirmed in phase three, ISLEND1 and ISLEND2 trials, this could become the first longest acting oral HIV treatment that doesn't require injections. Cool. And last but not least, number 11, AIDS map. Second Berlin patient has unusual immune response that seems to have removed his HIV. At the 20th European AIDS conference in Paris, researchers revealed new details about the second Berlin patient, a man who appears to be cured of HIV after a 2015 stem cell transplant for leukemia. He has now been off HIV treatment for seven years with no trace of the virus and his unique natural killer or NK cells may explain why. According to Professor Michaela mueller Trutwin of the Institut Pasteur, his NK cells had an unusual NKG2A receptor that triggered the production of powerful antibodies able to destroy any remaining HIV-infected cells. Antibodies that were even more potent than known broadly neutralizing antibodies. If we could induce the innate immune response to HIV seen in this patient in others, Mueller Trutlin said it would broaden our repertoire of approaches towards a possible cure. This makes him the seventh person cured of HIV through stem cell therapy and offers fresh insights into how the body's innate immune system could one day help achieve a general non-toxic HIV cure. Those are your articles for this week. Links to all these articles can be found in the description box below this video. Be sure to like this video 
Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that bell so you get a notification every time a new video comes out. And please share this with anyone who might find value in this content. Those are the best ways that you can help support me and my channel. Until next time, cheers.